I am going to the Lord's help try to finish the message we started this morning. And I do, I hope and I pray that things that we shared this morning help you see that in a little different light. What we do when we get it. And uh, we know we, we looked at the scripture in the book of Malachi, chapter number three. But I, I want to give you another passage of scripture tonight over the book of 2 Corinthians. And we we read one verse out of 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Uh, but I want to uh, give you the following verse, which is a which is a verse that I hope and I pray to be a help to you. Uh, all right, so we got that figured out. That's not going to be easy. All right. We're going to process getting one. We won't even worry about that. But uh, we talked about giving tithing this morning. And I want to tell you, I got a great big blessing. I got several folks actually kind of complimented. Not, not, not anything you necessarily think about when you preach on tithing, people compliment me on it. Several folks said they appreciate that. And I actually had a fellow tell me this morning, Brother David, David Ball, he said, I've been going here 10 years, I ain't never heard you preach on time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that blessed me, just to be honest. And uh, I know that I mentioned this morning just the simple fact that, that our church is a good giving church. I, I, I don't want nobody to come, think I'm coming across as complaining about what we do. I want you to think differently about it. And, and to think more about it when you do give. It's a, it's a, it's a joy. It ought to be a joy to be able to give back to the Lord. We are indebted to him for our very soul. Amen. And uh, that's, that's just a fact. Every one of us here tonight uh, that are on our way to heaven are on our way to heaven because he gave everything. Amen. Amen. He gave it all. And, and that's, the only, that's the only reason that we have any hope of heaven at all. And so I think that it's important that we see giving in, in the right light. Not as a, not as, not, like I said, not as a duty or as a burden, but as an opportunity. And uh, I'm gonna share with you a few more things tonight. I knew I couldn't get all that out this morning. And uh, it might be another 10 years before we hit it again. And that, so now I do, I'll just get it all out. And I do hope that you're writing those things down. Never once in a while, it'll do you good just to look back over those things. Right. And if you miss, if you miss something, I of course keep out my notes. I've got notes for years. And uh, if you ever if you ever miss something, if you want to ask me about what something that I've shared, don't hesitate to do that. Second Corinthians chapter number nine. Second Corinthians chapter number nine. And uh, if you find your place, you want to stand just briefly for the reading of God's word. We'll 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 do that. And uh, we will read God's word and I'll get you these last 25 points that I've got. So, uh, so maybe it's good, ain't it? It may end. I'm sorry, I only got 20. All right, that'll be a lot better. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 and uh, verse number 6. We actually read this this morning, but I want to get to what I have to do. But 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now that's a principle, that's Bible principle, and it's just a simple fact. If you uh, have or ever have had a garden, if you if you put out just a little bit, you're gonna get in return. You're gonna get more than you put out, but you're, you're just gonna get a little in comparison in return. Whereas if you put out a, a good sized garden, you, you plant those seeds, those things, you know this, you get out you get out more than if you just planted a little. And so it is with sowing, if you will, or giving inside the kingdom of God. And so if we want a if we want a large return, amen, we, we've got to consider what it is that we give. But he says this in verse number seven, every man according as he purposeth in his heart. You see that right there? Every man as he purposeth in his heart. Giving how you give is a direct reflection of your heart's relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see that because you, you need to consider that. Every, everything, everything that you do 
is a reflection of where your heart is. And he says there, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, don't do it. Right. Don't do it. I said this morning, and I'll repeat that, if it if it hurts you to put a dollar in the in the offering plate, just don't do it. Hey Amen. You go home feeling better. Hey Amen. You go home feeling better because you won't be worried about what you weigh and how you can get it back. But he said, not not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful gift. Amen. God loves the cheerful gift. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight as we bow heads before you, and, and again we know that this is not this is not the kind of message we preach in particular fashion. And uh, God don't preach on all that often, but I think it's important for us, for myself, and for every person that's in this room that can hear me, hear the importance and, and the joy that will come from you. God has saved people. God, we ought to rejoice in the fact that you've blessed us to what we can give. And Father, we ought to consider that every time that we do give, God, just how good that you've been to us. And so, even as the scripture speaks to us tonight, that we shouldn't give grudgingly or necessity because you love a cheerful giver. God, I pray that you'd help me to preach tonight, God, in a way that would honor you and encourage your people. Father, if face lost here tonight, even through a message like this, you know how to speak to a lost heart. Help them to see their need of a Savior before it's eternally too late. And we pray that you'll do that. It is in the high and the holy name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Again tonight, we're talking about tithing. We're talking about giving. And if by chance, I know there's a few here tonight that wasn't here tonight or you might have missed something, I'm going to go back over and I'm just going to give you real quick those points that we brought out this morning. As we talked about tithing, and, and the first thing that we brought out simply was this that tithing or giving provides for God's house. It provides for God's house. Everything you see uh, here before you was, was purchased, built, or dealt with in financially in some form or fashion. Uh, not only that, but it tells God that I trust Him. Right? It tell, giving tells God that I trust Him, that I believe that He's able. Amen. Provide for my needs. It creates room in my life for God to fill. Right? It creates. How, how many of how, how many of you have ever prayed like this? I do this. Many of us have ever prayed like this. God, empty me of thyself and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Anybody ever pray? Not necessarily those particular words, but along those lines. Empty me of myself. Get myself. Get me. Get me out of the way. And fill me with yourself so that I can be pleasing to you. Because the more I have of me in me, the less pleasing I am to God. Amen. And, and the more, the more that I that I that I grudgingly I would hold on to those things that God has blessed with me, or God bless has blessed me with, the less cheerful I'm gonna be in giving, and, and, and the less the, the less good that it's gonna do. Amen. So when we give like that, like we ought to. Amen. It provides room in our life for God to feel. Right. Fourth thing we thought we mentioned this morning, the last thing that we talked about this morning was this. It reminds me that I am not my source. We talked about how God even gives us the knowledge to know the job or the work that we do, how God provides physical strength and ability, mental ability, all of those different things. You wouldn't have that if it wasn't for God. I'm glad God's been good to me along those lines. And uh, God continues to be good, and, and we ought to praise Him for that. And, and just be reminded that He is the source of all that we have. Talk about how crazy I was praying over my car this morning. Amen. Make sure God understood that's His car. I, you know, if it's His, He's responsible for it. That's energy of your thought. Everything you give to God, you know what that makes? That makes God responsible for it. <laughs> Amen. I, if you if you if you want to lay claim to it and say this, you know, like a two year old, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Yeah, two year old thing. Well, I right, thought you go with George. I had it. Have had it. It's that old Toyota commercial say, have you? Or, uh, you asked for what you got? Toyota. Remember that? Some of you don't remember that. If 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 God's taking care of it, I promise you, God's taking good care of it. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. And, and so let that be a reminder that God, that God's your source and that you're not. Now, I, I want to jump into some new thoughts tonight, some give you some new things tonight. And man, I'm going to tell you, I don't know about anybody else, but in all honesty, I want to tell you that when I begin to look at these things and go over these things, it really blessed me because it made me think that. Here's, here's your fifth thought. It, it connects my money to a kingdom purpose. It connects my money to a kingdom purpose. You ever thought about how far your money has went? Our money has, has gone has gone around the world. The money that the money that you give has has actually they may travel not not the dollar that you put in, but that dollar in some form or fashion has traveled around the world and done more good than you will ever know this side of eternity. I was so blessed. I got to looking at this. I don't know if you still have this or not, but I, I just got. To, I was looking at it earlier in the week when I was thinking about this. But I got to look at it again this evening. I added something to it. Hey, man, but here's our here's our our, our budget for for August of two thousand of this year. And I got to looking at that, and I know this. I've been here twenty two and a half, almost twenty three years in December. Now I got to look and at best I know I'm right. Somebody, I may be wrong, and so I am, somebody tell me. But I got to look in here on this paper that we get in our business meeting, and it says outreach for the year total, $12,585.54. It come on down there and it says for missions, $9,904.42. Now that may not seem like a whole lot to you. Now I add that up, that's $22,409.26. And let me say this, that said, that is more than our church has given in a single year since I have been here that I can remember. Amen. I, and I've been here long, I've been here longer than anybody else in this room. And that is more than our church has ever done in a single year. And so I say that, say this, that I'm thankful for how, to, how our church gives. That's why I said this morning, I'm not begging for your money. I appreciate what you do, but I want you to think about it in, in a different way. Just think about what your money's doing. Right now, some of the money, the money that we have collected is working in the Philippines. Yeah, right. Amen. I mean, in, in places far, far away, we had that uh, no no fella come uh, a couple of months back. We uh, prayed, I thought about this, pay on this. We made a uh, vote on this for a long time. I've seen him some support money working in Thailand. But your money is working around the world. Yeah. And, and, church, listen to me, that's what we're doing. We are fulfilling the Great Commission. We may not be able to go ourselves. But when we when we give to things of that nature, it has an effect that goes around the world. Like I said, you may never see it here on this side of eternity. Hey, but every 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 time you you work a job, hey man, and you you ever you ever sit during the day and think about the job that you're working and think and, and just think, praise the Lord, I'm making this money and I can give it to the church and they'll use it. Amen. To further the gospel and to further build the kingdom and praise the Lord. I'm glad, thank God, I can do that. Amen. I'll tell you what. Let's say that I didn't get a whole lot out of that. It's all right. I'll tell you something. Your boss would be happy if you thought that way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He'd wonder why all of a sudden you started smiling so much. Because you realize, amen, that the job that you work helps you help the kingdom. Your, your giving, it, it, it connects your money to a kingdom purpose. And, and, and I don't know that nobody has, but I, I'll be honest with you, I have never thought about that quite in that way. How that, that, that God has blessed me and given me the ability to work a job and to be able to financially support my own family, but be able to financially give to the church and help the church, and that what I can give and I'm able to give to the church Travel's not, and it works here. We, we're working missions right here. We're doing evangelism here and doing different things here. But around the world tonight, our money is working. Praise the Lord. Hey, all of that, that, that ties my job to an eternal purpose. Amen. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, that, that'll, that'll make your job a better job. 
You may not like to work any better, but the simple fact that you're able to bless the kingdom and build, help build the kingdom because God has given you an ability to do something, that ought to bless you all. Amen? Now, I want you to think about that tomorrow. Have your boss call me. Now, I'm going to ask you if you notice the difference in the way you act tomorrow. But, but I want you to think about it. Look across your mind. If you work a job, now, some of you don't, some of you have got uh, income that you, you receive different ways, and that's fine. But you've earned that some way or another. Hey, I want you to understand that, that what you give ties your money to a kingdom purpose. And that ought to be a blessing to you. Amen? It ties your money to a kingdom purpose. Now, let me say this. If you, if you do work a job, think about this. It gives your job eternal significance. Eternal significance. First Corinthians 10 and 31 says this. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Now, two things right here, like I said, is going to make your father love you. More and more. Amen. You might even do raise out of this. Amen. It gives your job eternal significance. I don't know what anybody does. I think about this for 33 years. I carried around a hammer and I beat on the stuff and made a lot of round noise. And I and, and I never I never and I'll be honest with you, there's some things that I'm still learning. I never I don't ever recall quite thinking. That what I'm doing out here on this job today, amen, has a significance in eternity because how God has blessed me to be able to give because of what He's given me to work with. It, and, and, and He said here in 1 Corinthians 10 31, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. If you work the job, if you, ought to, you ought to work that job for God's glory. Think about the simple fact that God has given you this this morning the ability to do what you do. Amen. If God has given you the ability to provide and meet your needs, amen, and meet the needs of your husband or if you're, uh, if you're providing for a family, and God's given you the ability to do that and meet those needs, and friend, on top of that, support the kingdom work. Hey, listen, understand that your money now and your job now has eternal significance. Yeah. And, and you ought to be thankful for that. Your, it, it provides, it makes, it gives your job eternal significance. And then, come on down here to this. I like this. Proverbs 11 and verse 25. Proverbs 11 and verse 25 says this. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. It transforms my money into a seed. Now, I'm not talking about a Ken Copeland seed, all right? Or a Griffin Dollar seed. Or the old Osteen seed. Anyway, I'm talking about a seed that'll make a difference in the kingdom. Everybody, you, you might, most everybody in here is going to know exactly what a seed does. You ever seen a seed? Seeds are very, very small, right? But you take, I, I don't know how you how you do it. If, you, if you've got a garden, I don't know how you do it. I know when I was growing up, my mom and dad always had a garden. And when we was planting corn, anybody in here ever planted corn? I want to ask a question. How many seeds did y'all put for every stop? Two. Two. Three. Where did I get these numbers from? <laughs> what will them do? We always planted three. I, I, I don't know why. That's it. That is it. They said put three in there, so we put three in there. But if you know what a core, a, a seed of corn looks like, it's just one of those little, I don't even know what they call them, one of those little things off the corn up here. Or, or, and any kernels. Colonel, I don't know the colonel. I'm a preacher. Call the colonel. But you put three of them in the ground. I heard two, three, four. I can't hurt. You put those in the ground. 
Now, if you were to take those two, three, four, and eat them, you wouldn't get very far. Right? They wouldn't do you a whole lot of good. But if you if you if you plant that and that thing grows up and you get a full ear of corn, now you may not make a full meal off, but you can get a pretty good meal out of a good ear of corn, is that right? right? It's a whole lot more than you plant. And so when you when you when you <coughs> contribute or you give, what you are doing is you are transforming your money into a seed. We can, God can take a little and God can do a whole lot with it. And we understand that? Look at what God did with just dirt. Look at you. See, man, look at, look at what you've become. Right. How, just out of dirt. You ain't talked about that in a while, have you? The Bible tells me that God took the dust of the ground and he formed it into a man, breathed the breath of life into it, man became a living soul. Hey, look at us now. Something like eight billion that's on the planet. From one man. Did you know that the first woman was born of a man? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. There's a tricky question for the night. Where did the first woman? So the first woman was born of a man. Right? She came right out of Adam's side. I mean, not birth like we think of, but she came right out of Adam's side. But look at what God can do. Every one of us. Every one of us in some way, in some place in our life have seen God take something that we thought to be small and done a great and a mighty work out of it. Amen. Amen. I, I want to think about this church. I remember, I, now I wasn't there, but I, I, I've heard and much talk, as I've talked some of the former members and uh, folks like David and Brennan about how this church started, how it started the next month. This church actually started in a garage. Started in the garage down on Park Street and they eventually moved up into the uh, 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 the Riverton building up there to Lord. Then God bless them, give them this piece of property and they begin to build and little by little to what you see right here right now. God took just a little bit of faith that those folks had. They didn't have a whole lot to give. They man but God took what they had and they planted the seed and they trusted God to water it. They trusted God to give the increase. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, when we put it in God's hands and trust God to do it, what that does is that transforms what you give into a seed that God can grow and do a great and marvelous thing. Amen. 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 And, and listen, I just want to say this. I want to thank God that he's able to do that. Because I can't do with I can't do with my money what God can. You ever thought about that? I can't do with what God has given me what God can do with it if I give it back to him. God can do far more with it than I can. And so that ought to encourage us not to, not to give, as Bible said down in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful gift. Amen? And so what, what that does, it takes and it transforms your, your money into a seed. Now here's, here, here's another good one, and I hope it's a good one. Has anybody looked at that, thought about this a different way today? Anybody thought about you giving it a different way? I'm going home. Oh. <laughs> I, that's all I want you to do is I want you to think about it in a different way. Number eight. I like this. It breaks greed and self-reliance from my life. It breaks greed and self-reliance from my life. God hates greed. Amen. Amen. And I've known some greedy church members. And it seems to have a tendency not to work out real good for them most of the time. Amen. I, I know I, I know a couple of folk, and I, I, won't, I won't call them names tonight just for, I wouldn't want to embarrass them and save my life. And, and this is not, not what I'm going to say, not a bad thing. But I, I know a couple of folks that you got to be careful what you say you meet around. I say this about my father-in-law, who's dead and gone over glory. I, when I was when, when he was living, uh, once 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 I got in the family, and my wife was my wife was in this. And he got the point I think where he loved me more than he did her. Amen. <laughs> now you you young gentlemen, maybe old young ladies. Get to that place with your father in law, get your father in law, you've really done something. <laughs> yeah, man. It got, it got to the point where my mother in law 
came to me one time, I called him Pat, uh, he, Bill Sagrad, and uh, my mother-in-law came to me one time, I was not even, I wasn't really thinking about it, I wasn't conscious of it, but my mother-in-law came to me one time and she kind of pulled me off the side, she said, listen, she said, you need to stop telling him you need something. You know how you say, well, I'd well, like to have, or man, man, I need this, or I need that. You just look at stuff. You don't really need it. You just think you like to have it. You want it. And he'd go get it. And, and my mother-in-law said, you, you, if you don't need don't say nothing. Because if I could say something, I told him one time, I said, Pat, just a general conversation, I said, I'd like to have a full bed. He, at, within a week, he called me and said, hey, look, I found us a car. <laughs> and I said, if you have, I said, what kind of four bed? He said, let's go look at it. And I, we will sometime. I just, you have to be careful. I'm going to tell you, when we give to God, what that does is it breaks greed and self-reliance from our life. Folks that are like that right there, just like my father in law in high school saying, there's a couple of folks that I know, you can't outgive them. They may not look like this, they may not be shiny and flashy and all of these things, but there's some folks I can name out of this church tonight, they make you be hard pressed to do more for somebody else than they do. And those are the kind of people who have given everything to God and greed doesn't have a hold in their life. They're not living for the here and now, they're living for the hereafter. I want to read you this, Matthew, or Mark chapter number 14. Talk about breaking greed and reliance off your, off your life. This, this sort of shock, you know, I want to say before I read it, look, you'll, you'll see if you can top this, top what I'm going to read to you tonight. In, in Mark's gospel, chapter number 14, verse number 3 through 9, this is where Mary of Bethany anoints the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to listen. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at me, that is Jesus, there came a woman with an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. Now, I wanted, to, I wanted to give you this. That word very precious means very costly. It wasn't just cute. It wasn't just something to talk about sitting in a curio case that you just look at and say, oh, isn't that precious? It has to do with its value. What she, what she had was something of great value. This is something that she had worked for and labored for and, and, and collected for for quite some time. And the Bible says it's very precious and she break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? What do you think you're doing with that money? <laughs> what do you, let me say this. She gave it, she was giving it to God. Right. Now they may not pick up on that right then, but she was giving it to God. And you will not be more blessed than when you give it all. Now I'm just not talking about your baby for your whole life when you give it all to God. But nonetheless, there will always be somebody that'll question what you do. There'll always be somebody that looks at you funny like, what's wrong with you? Don't you understand? You're gonna need that. Hey, listen, here's, here's the deal. You have already put yourself in the hands of somebody that's able to meet your needs. That's not them. I mean, God, he, he promised, I believe that's a Bible promise where he tells us in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse 19, I believe it is, where Paul wrote, he said, but my God, there's, there's the his, he, he's got to be your God. Not just you say that he is, but that he is, that you're trusting him. Amen. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And what the Bible says, now there's one or two possibilities right there. Either that's the truth or God's a liar. Amen. Amen. You've got two possibilities for scripture like that. God, that's the truth, and God will meet your needs, or God's a liar. I know which side of that I'm falling on. Amen. 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 God's no liar. But if we ain't careful, we get greedy. 
And I think that I think sometimes here's a problem. Sometimes the more we have, the greedier we become. Now, I don't listen, and I just say this. I don't listen to John Hayden. But I remember hearing him say something, this probably 15 years ago. That tells you about how long it's been since I heard what anything he said. But I remember him talking about how people pray for money and pray for this and pray for that. And he said, talking about somebody might pray for a million dollars. And he said this, I've never forgotten this. He said, God might give you a prayer for a million dollars. He said, God might give you a million dollar problem and see how you handle that first. Right. Amen. Right. That's, that's good. That's good thought. But listen, if, if we're trusting God and, and doing, following this, this lady's kind of example, what that is doing is that is breaking greed and self-reliance off our life. And you don't need it. You don't need greed as a part of your life. You don't need self-reliance. The Bible says, lean on him. Amen. Trust in him, amen, with all thy, trust in him with all thy understanding. Lean on him, trust in him, amen, and listen, he, I promise you, will meet your need. Amen. So it breaks, let's, let's lean on him, it breaks for, uh, greed and self-reliance off from our lives. <clears throat> they said, uh, why was this place for the old and made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. Now, I did a quick search on that. That pence right there, that's a denarii. And what that is in, in Roman pay, that's about a day's wages for a Roman soldier. That's about a day's wages for a Roman soldier. And she gave what she what, what they said it was worth was 300 of them. That's a year's wages. Because you don't work 300 days a year. Right? Taking your wind, your days off, and you don't three hundred days a week or a year. Most of us don't. Some of you may. I don't know. Not everybody. Most folks don't work three hundred days a year. We may get close. But a year's wages in that box, and without without consideration, I want you to think about this, without consideration of her need, she broke that box and anointed the head of the Savior. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's somebody who don't have no greed. That is somebody who has no self-reliance. Don't misunderstand what I'm telling you tonight. I'm not asking you to bring your next year's salary into the church. Right? What I'm telling you is, trust the Lord. If, if anything that I can get to you from the message, and what, what, it really, what really struck at my heart was this, I've got, I need to learn to trust him more. I need to learn to kill more. I need to learn to give it all, in, in, in that sense, to give it all away. And trust him to do with whatever he sees fit. And not kick and, and, and not kick and fight against everything, everything that happens. God is smarter than I am. Know that's what shocked some of y'all? God's smarter than I am. Right. And just so you know, I don't want to make nobody feel bad. God's smarter than you too. And, and, and God knows more what the need is than I do. They, they said that could have been sold for 300 pence and given forth. They murmured against her. Jesus said, let her alone. Let her alone. You know why? He, he said that. Look, she, she's an example. Let me finish reading this right here. Uh, for the poor, Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. That's important. What she does, she, she, she wasn't thinking about herself. She was thinking about him. And that's how we do it. She, uh, for you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do them good, but maybe you have not always. She hath done what she could. Can you say that? She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Amen. What she done, what what happened right here in Mark's gospel was, was so was impressed the Lord so much that he had it recorded and it's in the mind. 
It's in God's preserved, perfect, pure, and holy word. For us to see as an example that I don't, I don't have to be greedy. I can trust God with everything that I have and still know, amen, that God will not let his youngins go under. Amen. David wrote out the book of the scriptures I love. David said this, I have been young, and he said, I'm now old. He said, I've yet to see the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Right? You're a Christian. You've been in this thing for a while. I pray that you can say that. So remember that in that idea of giving, what it proves is or what it does for me, it breaks greed and self-reliance from me, from my life. Now here's the last one. This last one I'm going to give you. And like I said, I hope you're writing these down and that every once in a while you'll look back and just be reminded about uh, 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 some ideals of giving. Number nine, and this very possibly may be the most important one. It lets everything else in my life know. If I look around here for just a second, because I want you to get this. It lets everything else in my life know that God is first. Amen. It lets everything else in my life know that God is first. I've heard this, and, and probably some of you have heard this, remember this from years and years ago. It, it said something like this. You can check an, an individual's uh, 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 balance sheet, uh, ledger, where they record money, what's coming in, what's going out. If you can look over a person's ledger sheet, where they're spending their money, you'll see where their heart is. Yes. It'll tell you right quick what is important in your life and what is less important. If your personal entertainment, what you give for personal entertainment, or what you what you put on yourself is higher than what you do in service for the Lord, guess who's more important in your life? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. It, it, and that's, that's just like, now listen, God knows every need that you have. So I, again, I'm not begging for you, man. I want you to see what you do. I want us to realize the joy and the benefit of giving, and how it can change and transform our lives when we're not when we don't have that grief. It lets everything else in my life know that God is first. Listen to this scripture, Proverbs three, verse nine and ten. Proverbs three, verse nine and ten. It says this. Get famous. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. <laughs> It'll be another 10 years, and y'all ain't get this. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. I want you to know right there that this ain't money. As I said this morning, it's not just about money. Honor the Lord with thy substance. That's, that's all that makes you up. That's everything about you. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Who gives the increase? God gives the increase, right? I mean, that's his Bible. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance with thy first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. How many of you want that kind of blessing in your life? Let's just be honest. Right? Sure we do. Sure we do. I want, I want God to bless me. Not because I'm greedy, but, but listen, listen. God owns everything. And, and, and listen, to be blessed by the Creator and the owner of everything also the owner of my very soul, hey, that says something about you. That says you're his child. You don't see the king's youngins running around looking like paupers. Or you ought not to. And most of the time when that happens, it happens because they have squandered or wasted what they have. But when they stay with the king, if you will, when they honor him with their substance 
and the first fruits of the uh, first fruits of the increase. Guess, guess what? The king lathers them with blessings. Lath pours it on. We go right back to that scripture in the book of Malachi, chapter number three, where we looked at this morning, and, and God told his young. He said, Bring all the tithes and the offerings into the storehouse and prove me now. If you go back to that scripture, you find there, there's two things that are attached to it. There's a blessing and a curse. You're cursed when you when you don't surrender it all to him. He said, uh, you're cursed with a curse for you've robbed me, even this whole nation. But that verse number 10 said, bring all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Prove me now here with the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out of grace. He didn't say I'll. You, you, you think about this, this is comparison. I read it in Luke 16. Where we find the story of the rich man and the lamb. It says 15 and 16. I always get those mixed up. But in Luke, you find the story of the rich man and the lamb. So when that, that rich man, when that rich man died and found himself in hell. He begged for somebody just to dip their finger in water, dip their finger in water, just to give him a drop. I can't imagine that. But God said, if you'll bring, bring it all in, the tithes and offerings, and he said, I'm not going to give you a drop. I'm not going to just dip my finger in, in the blessings that I'm possessor of and just give you a just give you a drop. He said, I'll pour it out on that. Let me ask this question. How many of you have ever had God pour out his blessings on you? Look at that. Amen. What about that? Ain't God good? Amen. Ain't God, I mean, God is good. I mean, you, you'll never, we talk about folks that, 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 that give and give and give, but I'm going to say this in closing. You'll never have to give God. Amen. You'll never be able to do more than he, he, he can. Hey, man, that's the message. I said it could be another 10 years before he don't hit again. So I, I, I really, I really hope and pray that that what I've shared with you today will cause you to think differently about giving. You call it tithes and giving. We touched on that this morning how the Bible New Testament doesn't, doesn't command us to tithe. It talks about giving and giving generously. But, but the next time, and, and here's, here's something, and here's what I want to ask you to do. The next time the offering plate passes by you, I'm not asking you to put in more. I'm asking you to think about what you put in more. What, what does that do for me? What, how does that weight me? When you begin to look at it like that, it'll change the way you feel. It'll make you think different about, about your gift. And so I, I, I hope and I pray that, that I've said something, that, that God has helped me to say something to be a help to you. Amen. And make you think about that a little bit. Anybody have a have a thought on your heart, a, a testimony word in any way? How many of you got a little help today? <laughs>